so what I told you was true from a certain point of view. <laughs> and welcome to a very, very, very special episode uh, of Tales from a Certain Point of View. Uh, as usual, I have got my co-pilot with me. Wookie, Wookie, say hi. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Yeah, everybody's smiling because of this. And then we got the man himself, P. Dobbs, an old friend of mine. Uh, yep. Great, great dude. Great, great dude. And we're, we're laughing because we have we have semi tortured P. Dubs a little bit. We little have, bit. we have. So P. Dubs, just like Lumpy, say hi to everybody, please, real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so why we said this is an extra special uh, episode is because. Um, uh, you know, Paul does a lot of stuff. He's on the tails. He's a, you know, he's a great friend over there in CBSI and all that stuff. But he also, uh, he, he reviews movies with, um, uh, Bored and Annoyed and, yep. uh, Downright Annoyed Podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, got, uh, Downright Nerdy Podcast. So they're two there different, two different channels and they flip flop back and forth with the, another group of, oh, other group of guys and review, uh, whatever movie we pick, spin a wheel and go from there. If you haven't seen it, check it out. We're going to have a link down in the bottom, so make sure you check it out. So we decided to take uh, take our friend Paul and torture him. When we say special, we're making him watch the Star Wars Christmas special. Yes, you can still find it um, on the internet. Uh, we're not suggesting you should do that, but we're suggesting. Oh, no, I suggest you do. <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely go watch all of this I, from start to end. I mean, I'm definitely a bigger Star Wars fan than when I woke up this morning. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh as you may know coming up they they have a special there there you know for years just a little history of it for years they um uh they really were like shining themselves away from from the, the holiday special they're saying it wasn't part of not just ca canon and even though lucas had his hands all over it he said this is not part of star wars period um now they're kind of doing a Lego revamp version up here coming up in the next couple of months, the next month or so. So we wanted to sit Polly down and we asked them, hey, did you watch the original? Of course, the answer was no. So we're like, hey, well, we're going to torture you through this. We do have a clip of him watching the beginning part uh, with his daughters. He's just finished watching it like 15 minutes ago. We haven't actually gone through and talked to him about it yet. So we're going to try to, um, if his cable holds up, we're going to try to uh, get it going and try to hear his opinion on, on, on some of the matters that was going on for the holiday special. Uh, if you want, watch the holiday special really quickly. I think it's an hour and like what, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes there. Come back, chat it. We, I don't think we can link. We're not going to link it down in the bottom because we're just not going to do that. Uh, but <laughs> definitely spend some time uh, torturing yourself, uh, and then afterwards uh, we'll probably. Well, we can still talk about it now. So now let's talk about the movie first, and then you can ask Solo and us because me and Solo both saw it when we were kids. Well, I saw it when I was a really young kid, and Solo saw it. We both saw it on TV. Uh, so we'll talk about how that experience was uh, later, but we really want to get Paul kind of into it and kind of his opinion and maybe some stuff we're going to throw out there and, and, uh, and start it off, uh, ask him his opinion on certain aspects of it and, uh, and what he thought of uh, people. So Paul, uh, how about you cover the first 15 minutes of what was occurring in, in the actual story? Man, it was just, uh, you had to, you had to learn how to, you know, if you don't know how to speak Wookiee, you, um, you know, you got to learn how to read body language really well. Cause it was, um, yeah, I mean, might as well just close your eyes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, Chewy is trying to get home for life day. Um, and, and so they, him and Han have left on, on schedule, but have not arrived on schedule. So it's his family of, um, I don't know itchy and scratchy but it's uh his kid lumpy his wife i i don't i can't remember her name if you guys pull it up in a tablet and then this terrifying grandfather <laughs> yeti thing uh wasn't that it, how, uh, board nine that's board nine who plays that isn't it is it i don't know but it looks like it anyway board, board nine I, it might be yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they just they tried to make it look like a, a someone with dentures or without their teeth in and just Man, it's everyone looks terrifying. <laughs> so, so the first why he's saying you might want to know, uh, you know, speak Wookie is because for the first, honestly, for the first like twenty to thirty minutes, it's them grunting at each other. There's no, it, it doesn't. There's no closed captioning. There's no like translation on the bottom. There's nothing. It's literally twenty to, I think it's like twenty eight, maybe or thirty four minutes of them just grunting at each other, and they're doing weird stuff too. Okay, so they're kind of trying to show how. 
well, this is after the first three minutes. Han and uh, Chewie come in the Millennium Falcon. They're running late, and then they somehow growl call out to Luke, who is fixing an X-Wing. And he's like, I don't know where they're at, but they'll be on time. By the way, speaking of that, Luke, uh, look terrible. If you, watch, if you, yeah, like if you ever want to see his look acting, that baby face, man. <laughs> it, it looks like it looks like someone trying to play him. Like yeah. it looks like it, someone it who, it, like, uh, hey, you kind of look like uh, you know that guy, Luke Skywalker. You should be him for Halloween as a joke or something. See, we won a contest. <laughs> Don't now, forget the eyeliner, though. Go heavy on the eyeliner. Now, granted, that is pre-car wreck. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, it is. Maybe. Yeah, it's fair enough. Uh, I should have done a layout picture. I didn't, but if there's definitely some out there, you can look them up. She, 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 she sure loved the drugs. <laughs> she sure loved the drugs. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, the, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Luke, if you, this is where I always argue about how terrible, if it wasn't for Harrison Ford, if it wasn't for what's his name who played Obi Wan, uh, Star Wars wouldn't have been that oh, good. Of, yes. Yeah, because I honestly, you can see the acting chops of 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 Luke and Leia in this in these portions, and they are wow, they're on par for the TV show. Let's put it that way. Not that <laughs> not that Harrison Ford had the best uh, part, but we'll get that to that later. So they start off, they show their kitchen, they show everything else. All of a sudden, they start introducing like weird characters. Uh, the guy who – this is actually a guy. <laughs> yeah, that was – I mean, that, I don't uh, – yeah. The, well, the first that, that character starts off with their hair not messed up and two arms, and then they mm -hmm. just slowly grow arms uh, to frustrate is that, is that to frustrate the Wookiee mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Gina, supposed to be like Andrew. a weird child cooking thing, but uh, the mom just grunts at the TV the whole time. As that occurs, that actually is a guy that's like three or four times in the. He's also he he also has a later part here where he's like plays this robot that's trying to be a teacher, but he's yeah, like <laughs> it's like Westworld 1.0 or something. Yeah, bad. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I so that's also bad. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is and obviously the, you know it's grainy because they they after they showed it they stopped they weren't you weren't they didn't come out on a vhs you weren't allowed to reshow it so a lot of people had have recorded it on dubbed vhs and then they converted it over so it's really tough to get good pictures out of this uh not that they want you to have good pictures out of it anyways but after the first oh oh yeah can you get a good picture of this no, out of I mean, this film? Sure. i mean is there i I'm don't think sure I think the material in the film itself no matter what you're taking a still of is just it's not going to be good it doesn't matter if it's clean if it's clear it's just funny content like there's not really a J like that yeah, like, man, it, it's this looks like um they took a suit from uh the grinch movie with uh the live action grinch movie and dyed it brown uh and then and then threw it on this on this kid there's definitely, yeah, there's definitely some issues. So, like, and what we're showing this for is like Lumpy keeps moving around while everything's going around. He keeps moving around to do all these other things because they keep adding these musical acts into it. We're gonna get to one of the biggest musical acts later. Uh, with Paul actually, he sent us a group text and was like, Did this seriously just happen? And it did, and we will cover it. All. <laughs> but like, so 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 Lumpy goes around and does a bunch of stuff while his mom's kind of cooking and throwing a misfit and throwing stuff up and watching the Julia Child break of the guy that's in drag with four arms. Um, and they cut, they do go to, uh, so I don't know about the vet or, uh, so, uh, <laughs> B. Arthur. Yeah. Man, and this, and this is kind of creepy too. So B. Arthur owns a bar. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Paul. Talk about the at the Moss Eisley Cantina. Yeah. Yeah, like is she she must be the third shift bartender or something if it's a 24 hour place and it's just in and it's like some promo video of here's Tantooine if you thought your life sucked this is unedited uh, and, and you know be glad you don't live here and then it just is bizarre just so bizarre <laughs> um to see her it was just like oh that's cool I know you know I, I recognize that actress she's in it but it's just it goes from this propaganda video to this story about her in the bar. And I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. So she, so she, ha she cuddles with these mouse things. Everybody sings. That's a, that's part of it. Like, um, very Carrie Fisher has got a part where she sings, uh, right. Arthur, I didn't know she could sing. She sing. everybody sings. They got like rock bands in the background. Sometimes everybody has like a singing part. So this is really harsh, creepy. Yeah. I don't, did you pick up on this, Paul? Like, first off, this guy's got a hole in his head where he pours beer into, which was just 
the most disgusting so thing. How he drinks. Yeah. So he drinks. Yeah. But he kind of, he kind of just molests her. He kind of like she turns him down. He's like, hey, look, I'm not interested. Yeah. And he like gropes her. And this is a kid's show. Yeah. He he apparently he was there the other night, and uh, she said some magical six words of something like, you know, come back next time. I'll be waiting or something. And he thought that was his specially for him. And then she says that she just yells at somebody else because that's her, you know, customer banter. And uh, and then that he sh- he gets shut down at the end of it. But it's uh, I, 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 the whole thing is like I don't get it. But it's, uh, right. it's just one. It's what's it's one. It's one mysterious punch after another. Oh, so do we do we want to get to the hairdressing it. machine or do we want to go with some of the storyline <laughs> on what's happening first? Well, let's go back. So. Let's go back to that lumpy picture. So this is Chewbacca's son. This is towards the beginning after the mm-hmm. 15 minutes of rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> and, and he's got this hollow deck, much like you see in the Millennium Falcon when they're playing uh, that video. Oh, brain Little fart. monster game. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, uh, I'm spacing on the name of it. And if you look at that thing, it's old 1980s something, 84, 85, like two cassette recorders with the flip top on the top and then the push buttons on the very front of it. And so the whole set, you can see how cheaply, quickly put together, even the set props are like not of high quality to start with. No, and, and we'll get into that later. With then they the animate the little hollow deck, and then they go on to is that uh, Diane Carroll singing. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that in a little. Yeah, we'll get to that. So they did drop it in. Yeah, the graphics are bad, and they did use a lot of like scalping stuff. So let's get into the, mm-hmm. and then we'll get into what the basis of the rest of the storyline is. Um, so there's a. Where is it? Uh, a creepy guy that runs around in the background? It's actually the purple guy weighs non thing, and he gets this hair dryer and he puts it on top of the grandpa's head. This and Paul, would you like to explain what happens when he puts the hair dryer on top of the grandpa's head? Yeah, this is um, uh, <laughs> futuristic entertainment at its best. Uh, <laughs> so he's like the local <laughs> tradesman, salesman, whatever he personally seems to personally know the family, and he brings this big device for the uh, for this grandfather and puts it on his head like he's going to watch a movie or VR or something and he's and he's he has some like creepy lead up line where he's like you'll really enjoy it and then he walks away and comes back and he's like you're really going to enjoy it so, something like that where you're like okay and then it goes into what he's seen and it's just like this strange it's this woman singing but but well first she talks to him and it's just this wildly inappropriate for a children's Christmas special. Um, she's banter. Supposed to be, yeah, it's, it's go ahead. She's supposed to be a, um, how can I say this without getting in trouble? She, um, uh, a virtual lady of the night. night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nymph, like, like fairy nymph type thing that is seducts, uh, people to do, uh, acts to themselves. Yeah. That it. probably the best way to put it. We'll keep going. And, and <laughs> I'll say it. What kind of noises does Grandpa make while he's watching this video? Uh, yeah, I mean, without all his teeth, it's. <laughs> well, and and the guy who sets <laughs> it up, the, the family friend that is yeah. the um, tinker mechanic inventor guy, reminds me so much of the father from Gremlins. It's not even funny. Like he's, he is like one in the same. Yeah. Sounds that I don't want to hear a Wookiee make were made. And uh, I'm glad the children had left at that point. Cause I didn't want to have to ex- explain anything. <laughs> yeah. I probably, I forgot to tell you probably that. that part was. You're like, <laughs> so, the first five minutes, so I'm like, probably it's okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's in a chat. Like all this stuff is really not appropriate. By the way, she like starts floating in like all types of, I just didn't even want to put up some of the pictures, but we'll add some right. Like, like it's not appropriate uh, for children. <clears throat> um, well, that's, not true. True. that's not entirely true. I think that because we're older and we know better now, that maybe we 
perceive it differently. Whereas yeah, yeah. when I was a child and I watched it, I had no clue that they were watching, you know, Wookie porn on the hairdryer and, yeah. and you You're know, right. the I'm weird sure. stuff going on. Like kids don't necessarily go into that. Um, yeah, but I mean, but they, I mean, they showed it one time. A song and dance to them. Remember, they showed this one time and then it was, no, we're not doing right. it again. So like, I think right. it's not just quality because, hey, look. There, next time we get Paul in here, we're gonna have to have him watch some of those Ewok movies. Um, <laughs> maybe. Like the um, <laughs> like Disney and Pixar do better job of hiding like adult jokes in their stuff than they do. this was just blatant. Blatant. Was just, was just, blatant. Yeah, like I, I don't even know. Uh, there's like abuse. Know. There's also abuse going on everywhere. Like they're throwing the mom around the house, and then like, and then we'll get to this part. So all of a sudden, an announcement comes on, and that's kind of where the B. Arthur thing comes in too. Uh, and this is actually out of it. Like this is how good the graphics are and everything like that. Like uh, this is the cleanest image we could get. The guy goes on all the TVs, and he's like, "Hey, we think we have rebels on Kashiki, so we're going to come down and enforce all these rules." They pretty much. Uh, walk into Chewbacca's house and just start beating the family, like pushing the family around. They yeah. throw the one caretaker guy out. And in, in through all this, they're like, I mean, they're definitely, they like kick the kid a couple times or whatever. But then all of a sudden it's like, all right, kid, go do this. And this is where it actually is a good scene. And I don't know if Paul knows about this, but like um, this is our headphones and whatever. So they found everything they could. He gets on this little device and then he watches, uh, <clears throat> he watches a cartoon. Yeah, this was. Um, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Just when they no, switched this cartoon, I was like, "Is this heavy metal? Like, or just like jumping genres and jump?" And I was like, "What's going on?" But anyway, I'm sorry. Finish your thought. No, so that's it. So I was actually going to ask your opinion on it because this, this, I don't know if you know what this cartoon is, but it's very like in Star Wars lore, it's probably pretty important. Like uh, to Star Wars fans, this cartoon. Um, that's probably why somebody left it on tape, and eventually, it, thank God, made to. <laughs> The internet so you could watch it but like the cartoons the reason why um do you do you know why the cartoons important uh i don't i could guess but go ahead yeah yeah, yeah so, sure is it something with boba fett first it is that's first, first boba, boba fett, fett. Go back to it. he's riding on the little uh animal there there's uh that's the best picture i could get of first boba fett it's really good he <clears throat> so there's a storyline with han solo being upside down yeah that is the boba sure. fett the dinosaur he's on there's a storyline. Uh, the storyline talks pretty much Chewie and Bo uh, Boba hook up to do something, but of course Boba's trying to backstab him and Got whatever. It. The video is kind of interesting. There's a lot of the, but you're right. It's very heavy metal style during portions of it, and then it's very ABC Saturday Morning Schoolhouse rock cartoonish, which like they couldn't even keep consistency throughout the cartoon. Um, but once again, that's like a huge. That is a huge. Uh, point for a lot of star wars fans where they love it or where they start talking about it and mm -hmm. you know solo we showed the book that they did that and so that was pretty cool i think that probably was the coolest part it was weird how he yeah. set it up because like stormtroopers are walking around in the background like just bashing his family around he's like oh i'm gonna sit down and watch a cartoon <laughs> yeah well, right? and, and we've uh, we've also skipped one of the most important parts two of the most important parts to be totally honest in the beginning, we see Han and Chewie flying through space, and Han is being chased by the Empire, and he's trying to get Chewie home for Life Day. Mm -hmm. Where do we hear Life Day? Often what? referenced lately. In The Mandalorian. Oh, it's late. Uh, yeah. So that is the when they're talking about Life Day in The Mandalorian show, that's what they're talking about is this special day life day was created from the christmas special mm -hmm. so for them to go back and and do a throwback and call to that is kind of a a big thing well they're and gonna then, do they also show boba fett's rifle um which it the first time we see him in that cartoon and he's got that oh man i don't know why i can't remember names tonight there's a name for that rifle and i forgot it um and we see that now, and the Mando has that rifle. So for them to bring back that throwback was pretty big for a lot of the, the deep dive fans. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of like the cool parts of the, of the Boba Fett thing was they're showing that up. And obviously, you know, like I said, they're making a Lego Christmas special that I think is going to kind of mock this a little bit too. 
I think they've gotten away from like taking it as seriously, which is what, you know, a lot of the Lego line stuff that they do nowadays is pretty fun for kids or for adults that like to laugh at it. Kind of like you were saying, like they do the humor right there where yeah. we would be surprised if we see our hairdresser go on top of a Wookiee and, you know, it's kind <laughs> of a joke, right? Like so, the door just, the door just closes. <laughs> right. But no, I mean, that's kind of fun. You know, it's kind of cool. Like the whole bubble thing there. It's a great scene. I think the cartoon's only 12 minutes. You are right though. It is definitely like heavy metal in the front half. And then like, would you say ABC rock? Like during parts of it? Like, I don't, yeah. cause they do a call out. And she's like, why is hot upside down? Which is also just, did they, was that even Carrie Fisher's voice? I don't even know what they have one actor <laughs> in, this, <laughs> in this TV show play like five parts. He played like four or five parts. And then there's like stuff that was dubbed over and you're like, Oh, that's not even that person saying things. Like I, I just don't know how this made it past paper. I, <laughs> I, I it's, it's it's it's, paper. So okay, the scene where old man has his orgasm. The whole thing, we, I mean. Well, but, why we uh, know that is because in the script, in the script, it was that. said like that's what he was supposed to do was to yeah, I mean that's working <laughs> orgasm. No, yeah. yeah, they said that he was supposed to be uh, seduced by the nymph and uh, something to the effect of, you know, have a, I can't remember exactly how they put it, but it was pretty blunt back then. I mean, there, dude, listen, there's a lot. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I wonder. <laughs> this was a very different time in America. Let's take that into consideration. Yeah. When, when did this come out? Was that 80? I, I think it was yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it was it was seventy nine eighty right in that ballpark. It, it, it was really very a much a different time. But I'm sure I saw it on. So out here in the Midwest, we had you know our when we you when you used to have the like the the three button or four button click or the turning of the thing. Mm -hmm. We had it was two four seven and fifty and fifty was WGN for those that remember. And I swear I saw this on WGN. I might not have because I was really young at the time, but I swear they had it at WGN. So all the time they said that they've only played it once. I actually think they've played it more than once, but like WGN used to like, I mean, WGN will play a lot of repeats of stuff and I'm not sure, sure. all the license repeating. So well, um, and, and Star Wars was huge. They were looking to try and grab some more money because yeah. they're like, Hey, well, let's ride this wave. It definitely let's, was a different era where you could let's, like, let's put out hair dryer wookie porn and see what yeah, I mean like but but you see like dude, like I like I get all the like and, and Star Wars is always but this is the creepy part because there's huge rats that mean no sense. So it was like they pulled out every puppet that they had in the back room. But I don't even know why Star Wars would have rat puppets. But like they had rat puppets apparently it, or it was like Lego. Yeah that the yeah. rat puppet looks like um a creature from the the man what's the the David Bowie movie yeah uh, labyrinth? labyrinth yeah, yeah. it looks like something from labyrinth mm -hmm. they probably just went and and asked the studio what they had that was dusty that they could use and just <laughs> threw it into this bar scene it's like yeah, yeah sure any alien can exist in star wars and <laughs> absolutely what did uh, we use in the movie that's left over Luke? yeah yeah we know you got that giant warehouse back there let's use some of that stuff so at one point um to progress the the pain, probably at about the four forty five minute mark or so after the bubble fat stuff, uh, Chewie does show up, and so does Han, and uh, of course he gives his kid a hug. But then one of the best action scenes of all time, it <laughs> this occurs, which yeah. Paul, would you like to explain what's happening here? Uh, so the the um, Empire is searching through the houses. And they all leave except uh, the one who goes up and just destroys the uh, the son's room, like it's a drug raid, breaks his <laughs> breaks his uh, toy and everything, and then um, and then when when they show up, he he falls through the flimsy railing because their houses are I don't know two hundred yards in the in these gigantic trees or something, and so yeah he um, he uh, falls to his death. <laughs> Actually, so what really happens in that, that's pretty close. What really happens is somehow Han Solo uh, hits his foot, like trips him, I guess, is what you would yeah, say. Exactly. He trips him 10 feet through a rail oh, no, to Shiki Wood, which is supposed to be one of the strongest, like, natural, um, you know, elements or whatever. Like, it's it's they use it for 
um, in Star Wars lore, they'll use it for like luxury yachts. They make like wood grain stuff out of it. So it'd be like dark walnut or something like that. Yeah. So it's supposed to be really strong, really tough and rare to get. But somehow uh, tripping over Han Solo's foot throws the stormtrooper 50 feet uh, into a rail. <laughs> and then, yes. And then they yeah, do I, a I, long view. I knew they were fighting, yeah. but I must have missed the trip. Yeah, but it wasn't even like fighting. Gun. Gun. Or like it was weird how it happened. I mean, it the was, way they show it is, I mean, if you're not, if you blink for that one second, you'll miss it because all you see is just like this. And it's, it's going to sound funny the way I said it, but literally his Han's foot is just sitting out there. Like Han's been sitting there for 10 minutes, <laughs> just waiting for him to kind of run over his foot. And, and I think it's like they touch but, I mean, feet. It's, it's so hard. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's bad. Just it's bad. But then to make it worse, so then all of a sudden, okay, so the, the empire has been fought back, but then Leia shows up and she's got to sing her or whatever. Leia, you know what I'm talking about. She shows up. She's got to sing her song. So then this happens. Yeah, I was like, oh, is this when all the Wookies die on Life Day? Is going into the Light Caroline? I mean, geez. So, <laughs> so what this pretty much is is like all the Wookies then all of a sudden get red robes on, and then they do that bad back screen star type thing and actually those are the stars from star wars is back screen actually they used a lot of stuff from star wars in here including some of the music but um and then they put a light beam there like that's oh was jj abram shooting this because there's a light flare right there <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh uh then all of a sudden the wookies kind of traveled into it and they were inside the life tree um and then leia's there and then she's like yeah i'm gonna sing a song because you know why not Everybody oh, you left out. You left out the Jefferson Starship part. Oh, I did. Yeah, Jefferson Starship yeah. was. The Jefferson Starship shows up and has a big jam. And was, I mean, it is. It, it is. was more hard, like this one over here. I mean, just go rock and roll, baby. <laughs> they definitely had a, just a, a bunch of disco and rock and rolling going on. So she sings that, and then, uh, and then they. Oh man, they just do like a hugging, hugging thing, and then. There, there's really no rhyme and reason to the ending or the beginning of it. And no. the life day thing doesn't make any sense really either. Like well, it, the whole the whole thing is to get Chewy home for life day. That's the whole thing, and he does end up making it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I think it actually was uh, they wanted to show Wookie uh, self porn. Uh, <laughs> show how bad everybody sung back in the day. Uh, they definitely had uh, messages about uh, jackboot people coming because I mean it was very reminiscent. Paul brought it up where they destroy the kid's house and stuff like they were, it was very jackboot type stuff that was going on. Yeah. I mean, the B Arthur scene is, is cringely that did not, <laughs> not that and, the movie held up. Well, that it has no uh, purpose. Uh, There's yeah. absolutely hundred percent. No rhyme or reason. Why? Why it's no. in there. It's no. just yeah. there. <laughs> Plus the guy's head, he's got a hole in the head. Like you don't see it right away. And like a, the yeah, he's yeah, like a bird nest on his head that and she finally gets him a drink and he instead he pours it through his his bird nest hair and that's how oh, he drinks. It is gross. <laughs> um so that the only thing salvageable out of there was the death metal slash ABC uh Saturday morning cl uh, clubhouse uh cartoon. And even that wasn't so good because they kind of mashed it up. But um yeah, so good. So, Paul, you're going to give this a thumbs up, double thumbs up. You think it's an A-plus movie here? What's yeah, two, two lightsabers up, uh, which was there. It was not even a single lightsaber in the whole uh, the whole series, the whole special. There actually wasn't any force either. They didn't use any force in there. There wasn't – I mean, Luke was there, but he was – all he was doing pretty much was fixing the X-Wing, right? Yeah. yeah he R2-D2 and C-3PO showed up. So Han mm -hmm. shows up, Leia shows up, Chewbacca shows up. C3PO, R2D2, and Luke. I mean, you got everybody there. But uh yeah, except Darth Vader. Darth Vader didn't show up. He was there. Was he, he? Was there? Mm -hmm. Not in the cartoon. He showed up in the actual yeah. I didn't watch it. One one scene? Is yeah, like a there? quick scene and maybe a video. I think he's in a is a, he's in a, a like a character interaction scene and then like a video message. But yeah, just basically find the rebels and the, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even the, even the outfits for the Imperial Troopers, not the Stormtroopers, but like the actual Imperial Trooper. And for some reason, I think they also had like, uh, they had one of the characters that is the trooper that that runs the uh, programming on the Death Star, which I don't know why he was on the ground doing house searches, but that's whatever. But 
even their their uniforms were sloppy. Like they were as much as you know, Lucas was famous for making sure that everything lines up. If you watched our thing with um Leaky Trooper, how they the 501st had to have all their uniforms. When you watch this thing, there it 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 looks like a fan film that kids made with adults in it, and that's I, I'm speechless actually. I don't know what to say about that. The, the fan films today kill this. Like the, yeah, right. This doesn't even hold a, a a candle to that. So so I was going to ask you guys what um what did kids say at school the next day? Like was it just because obviously we're watching this so many so much so many more years later that we can look at it like what in the world but i didn't know how it would strike you in the in the time i could just imagine i don't know was it confusion or not we loved it man we were stoked <laughs> <laughs> i'm not even kidding i remember going to school being like dude that was awesome it was great you know but you know at at, at that age and that time like I, I could see kids I getting excited. I didn't realize like, it was cassette players that were on the hollow table. I yeah. didn't realize that, right. you know, the guy who played the robot at the end was also the dude that played the Gordon Ramsay chef telling you how to cook, you know, Bantha oh, you're rare, you're or Bantha steak or whatever it is. And, oh. um, you, you know, it, it just, yeah, it was, it was, it was still, it was still at that point in time where things were magical. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, the only for me, thing. what about you, Mark? Was it different for you? No, I mean, looking back on it. Okay. So looking, obviously I brought this up and I, it isn't the first time I found it on the internet or watched it. Big surprise. Uh, so what I, I was, but so you got to remember too, in that time, like there's a starvation for like, it's not how stuff is ran now too. Okay. And I, I mean, I, everybody grew up differently. We didn't, obviously we didn't have the cable or anything like that. We had the turn knob system and uh, there wasn't a lot of material out. You got to think this is still before the big 80 booms of toys where they started making cartoons uh, and stuff just to sell merchandise. And there wasn't even a lot of merchandise out there for the Star Wars stuff. So you were just trying to like, it was cool. All this stuff, the cartoon, that cartoon was like, that was the future. That's what we thought right. 2000 would be about. Like, seriously, that's what we thought when we're, Hey, when I'm my dad's age, when I'm 30 and 40, like that's going to be all over the place. And that's what everything's going to look like. And it's going to be so super duper cool. And now we're like, Oh, wow. That was kind of rough. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Were wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, back then it was like, dude, did you see uh, Chewbacca's got a son? And then everybody's growling. And then it was, you know, I mean, you did as a kid. I mean, how much of that do you really take? And I was really young, so I mean, really young. So, like, how much of that do you take in, right? Like, mm -hmm. you don't take in forty-five minutes of the. You take in like, oh yeah, they were talking to each other. Of course, they were talking to each other. You don't understand. Some kids at that point didn't understand. You know, like I think about my four-year-olds. Like, they don't understand everything we say all the time. They tune out our conversations <laughs> all the time. It's about three minutes of what we're saying, and that's it. So. To that, to that, to you, it was like cool. I got to watch TV, uh, right? Because back then there wasn't a lot on TV, and then it was like, oh, and it's cool because it's Star Wars. So it's something I like on, to watch on TV instead of just like, oh, cool. I got to watch. I'm going to say Wheel of Fortune, but I don't even think that's right. I can't even like you didn't watch TV back then. Like there was what was on TV. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't there wasn't anything on TV. So this was like one of the first things where you're like, that's cool. That's the future, and it's on TV. Oh, Jim Henson had some stuff on because there's some. He this does remind me of some of the Jim Henson stuff that yeah. was really bad. It was on TV. Yeah. Well, but then then the next appearance that you see was actually Luke Skywalker on the Muppets. Now, I'll, I'm going to throw – this is before MTV, kids. <laughs> For all you people watching, <laughs> this is pre-1981, September 30th, video killed the radio star. This is before that. We still didn't have things like that yet. Yeah, I mean, it was a whole different system. So, like, it wasn't, and it depending on where you live. And I grew up in the Midwest, and I grew up, I grew up by a big city. So we did get stuff. I mean, obviously, we got stuff coming out from Chicago because GN was big. As I mean, it's kind of hard to explain now to people, but pretty much how it worked was like, um, there weren't these big conglomerates. Like, mm -hmm. you had your national stuff, which pretty much did news, and then you had these super stations. Like TNT eventually became one. Turner ended up doing Turner Broadcasting. WGN for Chicago, but a lot of it was regional stuff that you'd have on. 
So you'd only get to see pretty much news, whatever program they thought was acceptable for you to watch, which wasn't much. Um, public broadcasting probably was some of the best stuff out there at the time for kids. Um, and then you'd have something special, hopefully like this, and this would show up at like six o'clock in the like winter time or something. And this would be like the one thing you'd watch and you, and TV was like, it's amazing. Like, you know, you got to think that was the era when TV was really get like, yeah, I know people always say like, Oh, well, co when color hit TV. Yeah. Yeah. This is like just when cable was about to start coming out. Right. Like yeah. not, it had already come out, but when it started to become widespread, so you knew this was going to be the second type of medium that was coming out. And to see something like this in the future, it was futuristic. It was like the coolest thing hmm. that happened. And I don't think that's why when we say like, oh, well, they pulled it off because it's not. No, they pulled it off because adults watched that and was like, you cannot yeah. have any more. <laughs> no, you can't have that, bro. Jeez. That's not going to work. I, and think about this. Like, think about the response rate you had to do that. Like, think about how, they, how many people had to call in because they literally had to call in. So people were probably furious calling in to radio to local stations and going, I can't believe you have <laughs> this is supposed to be a kid show. They were probably losing it all on it. And well, and I mean, you're talking on the phone, you're uh -huh. and the phone was on the wall. It's not on your hip, it's on the wall, <laughs> folks. It's attached. You didn't even have cordless at this point. You had a big long curly cord that was eight feet long and had to call and sit and wait. And so this was also really true. I do remember this now that we're talking about it. I do remember that you could get bootleg versions of because it had been shut down really quickly. But I, years later, you could still get like you would go to flea markets or whatever. In flea markets is pretty much all they had. They had flea markets and like little type shows like a junk shows or whatever. They didn't call them junk shows. They called them like trade shows or whatever they called them. But you could go there and there would be these dubbed on eight be uh, betas and yeah. uh, yeah, beta yeah. marks. And they'd have them on VHS, and you could actually get copies of this because this, there you gotta think people didn't people didn't like um, how the stations work. Like this is why you can't see stuff because it was fuzzier than Polly's internet connection right now. Like, <laughs> it'd be blurry of everything, right? And you wouldn't be able to see it. So like people would have better copies of this because they would have the expensive Betamax converter or the I think Magnavox at the time had made um, this VHS player that was really like top of the line. I think it was a whopping uh, $60, which was like just the equivalent like, of probably four to $500 now. Or yeah, something. that's like four or 500 now. Yeah. So the guys would get that, they'd buy that, and they taped this, and then they would boot, bootleg. I mean, it wasn't bootleg, though, because people who couldn't, like, TV was different. Like I said, it just was different. Like, you had well, Rabbit Ear, or you hit it, or... Yeah, you had Rabbit Ear. So you were also watching, you know, Warner Brothers, Bugs Bunny cartoons. You were yeah. watching Dukes of Hazard was out and on that time yeah i mean tv was very different so when you yeah. got this you were excited because this was the closest that you didn't have at home movies yet unless you were incredibly rich uh you didn't yeah. have those betas you didn't have a lot of those vhs's they were around but you just it wasn't very prevalent like it is today so to get even this snippet is very exciting for the kids and it starts the special you know the the special logo that spins yeah. around and it's like it looks like the rapido graph <laughs> set that you, you know like that and that's the same special logo that you saw before the um the grinch who stole christmas came out you know and and the um because this uh, did come in the the holiday. special <coughs> see that was the major tv time back then too yeah was a special time and the special time would come out around Christmas. <coughs> Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that they would show these type of things and you know they come up the claymation type of stuff like that every year. A couple other things. But like what he's what Solo's saying is right. Like think about this. Like if you watch New Hope, you you were seeing it in the theater and then after it stopped playing in the theater, you didn't get it. to see Star Wars. Like wow. there was no Gold yeah. Reese, Levy, Blue Race, whatever. There was nothing. So, well, but this is so I remember this clearly because I also did the Fantastic Four in this too. Is um, a lot of the entertainment too still would. It sounds weird. I'm not that old, but like you would have these for kids. You'd have the radio books where you would or the the record books. So you take a record and you put it on. And Star Wars had come out with a couple of those too. And yeah. you put it on there, and they they'd be a story to tell you around. So that's all you had. You had nothing else. There was nothing. There just wasn't anything to do. I mean, comic books obviously were too old at the time for me. And yeah. um, 
So yeah, no, it was the coolest thing in the world. Mm. Coolest. Thing in the world. <laughs> no matter how bad it was, it was still exciting because it's all you had. Right. You you didn't look that gift horse in the mouth like we do <laughs> today. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's so, do you can you feel the um, can you feel the gift horse that you have been bestowed upon? There, I, I, can I you? feel the I feel the force. <laughs> we actually have to have your kids watch the Lego one. You can just give us a review next time of what they thought about that one, because you're not going to let them watch the rest of this. And I I understand. I wouldn't. Yeah. Because uh, I was thinking about doing dueling kid videos where I let my and I was like, oh, man, they're four. There's no way I'm letting them watch. This. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I really appreciate you coming on doing that. Um, I think maybe if you got some time, not maybe after the holidays and everything else, we'll do the uh, caravan to Endor if you don't mind or something like yeah. that. Maybe review another game. one. Uh, they're a little bit more appropriate. They're, there's still some creepy parts in it. Don't get me wrong. Um, it, I'm not going to spoil it because I thoroughly enjoy getting the messages like, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can finish consuming this, which is like probably one of the best lines I've ever heard about this uh, special. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 what did I send you guys? If I can even read what I sent you on the, uh... I don't think some of them you can because you talk about the hairdresser part, and I was like, oh, that's yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> I said I really didn't want to watch an elderly Chewbacca get its stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, have, yeah, a, good have yeah, a good time. Have a good time. <laughs> yeah. So you're welcome for that. You will not be able to scrub that out of your memory from now on. So no. never forget it. <laughs> hey, once again, so you guys on uh, Monday night, you guys do uh, Tales from the Flip Side, right? Yes, we do. What's the rest of your schedule look like usually? Uh, so every um, Saturday or Sunday, it's been it's been flipping. But I'm also a guest on the um, uh, YouTube channels, Bored and Annoyed and Downright Nerdy Podcast. So we have a group of guys okay. where, yep, every every weekend uh, we flip flop which uh, channel we're on, but we review just whatever movie is picked. So we spin a wheel, and either one of us gets to pick it, or um, or the audience does. Um, so we have a genre wheel too. So every now and then, it's just a random movie that none of us. It's just random decision, but um, it's fun. It's been a lot of fun. So subscribe to those channels and um, check it out. I've also been doing a uh, retrospective review. We just released the first episode on the Bored and Annoyed channel for um, Nightmare on Elm Street. So we're working our way through that series. We previously did the Friday the 13th series. So just having a good time. No, it is good. It's so fun to watch. I, the 13th, <laughs> the 14th, the weekenders, and then... I love that you guys do comments and you're like, all right, who's in the audience? I'm always trying watching live <laughs> so you can get on that wheel of destiny to get your movie pick on there. And hopefully you get one in there and it's just so much fun. All those shows are so much fun. They are great. Uh, I'm glad we didn't, we were thinking about doing turtles with you, which is fine. Or talking about how you, uh, <laughs> how you uh, got me one of my favorite wrestling memorabilia. But um, oh yeah. But instead, we did this. I think we're going to do a couple more of these. We really appreciate it, Paul. Thank you very much for coming out. Solo, take us out. Please, guys, go down there. Give a force push on that like and subscribe button. Go over and saber smash that bell so that you can be alarmed when the most handsome faces on this side of the galaxy come to your YouTube channel. And may the force be with you always. There you go. All right. Pet club. Pet club.